What's up guys, welcome back to another CSCS study session. Today, we're gonna to take a look at chapter four of Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning. Um, it's a book written by NSCA, and it's the book that we use to study for CSCS. Chapter four is all about endocrine response to resistance exercise, so let's dive right in. All right, so starting with this first slide here, we're gonna to try to categorize all the hormones that we need to know into these um, two categories, and then, Three categories so there are um, different ways to categorize the hormones if that's kind of confusing um, but let's just start with it and it'll make more sense so the best way I think the easiest way to categorize them is into anabolic hormones versus catabolic hormones so we kind of talked about this in my previous video um, anabolic means you're building up a molecule so you need to spend energy it costs energy but you're building up a molecule versus catabolic, like a cat that destroys um, a sofa, for example, you're breaking down a molecule so you can absorb energy from that broken down molecule. So that's a very simple way to think about it. Um, some anabolic hormones that we'll discuss in this chapter are insulin, insulin-like growth factor, testosterone, and growth hormone. And we'll go into the details later in the slides Catabolic hormones include cortisol and progesterone, okay? And what these guys do is they can degrade cell proteins. So that's one way to categorize all the hormones that we'll talk about. Here's another way to categorize them um, into three different categories, right? So there's steroid hormone. Um, these guys, I say, it passive diffusion through muscle fiber and that forms uh, HRC, which stands for hormone receptor complex. All right, so that is steroid hormone, um, one of the most well-known type of hormones, I would say. And then there's polypeptide hormone. These guys, uh, an example of them, are insulin and growth hormones, which are anabolic hormones, right? And then finally, there's amines hormone. So these guys, um, some of the examples uh, that falls into amines is epinephrine, norepinephrine, which are responsible for our fight or flight response. Um, and then there's also dopamine and tryptophan. Moving on to the next slide, I'm not gonna go over every single hormone here. Um, studying for the CSCS exam, I did not think it was that important to know what exactly each hormone does and where it's secreted um, from. So we're just gonna go over the main ones. So we already talked about um, cortisol um, and glucocorticoids in the previous slide um, and also epinephrine norepinephrine right so these all these hormones are adrenal hormones okay that's where they're secreted and they pretty much have the same effect and they're both catabolic hormones all right so that's very important to know and then we also talked about I'm going to use a different color, growth hormones and insulin-like growth factors and then also testosterone, okay? These are all anabolic hormones which help you build a molecule like a muscle. So those um, three, um, growth hormone is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland, um, insulin-like growth factor from liver and testosterone from testes, okay? so. Um, just have a basic idea of where these hormones come from and what kind of hormones they are when you put them into categories. Going on to the next slide, um, now we're going to kind of apply this concept and definition to how resistance exercise and resistance training affects our hormones. Okay, So with heavy resistance exercise, not just any exercise, but heavy resistance exercise, um, we're going to look at how that affects our hormone, whether it increases or decreases it or uh, stays the same. Okay, so with heavy resistance exercise, it is said that there is an increase in anabolic concentration. So hormones like testosterone, um, insulin growth factor, or insulin or growth hormone tends to increase with heavy resistance exercise. Okay. Um, Hormones are not just secreted after exercise, but they are secreted before, during, and after. Okay, also important to note here 
the increase of blood concentration of hormones means there will be more interaction of hormones but it does not necessarily mean that you need um, more hormones to basically gain muscle okay but it does represent increased activation of hormonal release okay so there's a higher chance that you'll be releasing more hormones with exercise but more hormones aren't necessary they're not mandatory for muscle gain okay so we're gonna go over all the important hormones here and we'll start with testosterone which is an anabolic hormone like we talked about earlier um, it's a primary androgen hormone that interacts with the skeletal muscle it is responsible for growth hormone response so although they are two different hormones testosterone is known to be responsible for growth hormone response and also that kind of results in the synthesis of new proteins and um, strength gain okay so increased strength gain so how do we optimize our testosterone um, response right with in terms of heavy resistance exercise how do we make the most out of our body in terms of it producing the most testosterone right so it is said that it increases with large muscle group exercises like deadlifts power clean um, heavy resistance exercises that target 89 or sorry 85 to 95 percent of one rep max mod to high volume exercise so not just um low volume but you gotta reach a certain number of reps set some reps in order to make it a mod to high volume exercise um short rest intervals that are between 30 seconds and one minute and finally two plus years of resistance training experience these are some of the methods in terms of heavy resistance training that you can use to optimize testosterone um, uh, response in our body okay all right moving on to the growth hormone which is also an anabolic hormone um, these guys are made in the pituitary gland okay and they are regulated with neuroendocrine uh, feedback not going to go into detail with that one but it's something to to know right um, so what is this role? It decreases glucose, glycogen, and increases amino acid and protein synthesis, okay? Um, it also helps us or our body use fatty acids more efficiently. How do we optimize um, growth hormone response? Uh, we need to do high intensity and short rest periods with our heavy resistance training like we did with testosterone. And also it said three sets of every exercise okay um, there weren't any optimization factors that I saw in the book for insulin like growth factors but I included it here because it is on anabolic hormone moving on to the next one um, this one is cortisol so I'm going to use a different color now because it's a completely different hormone um, because this is a catabolic hormone all right, so like I said in the previous slide where all the chart um, was, the big chart, it's an adrenal hormone, okay? So what it does is it converts amino acids into carbs and inhibits synthesis of protein. That's what it does. And it increases with high volume, short rest period exercises, just like other hormones that we discussed, like testosterone or growth hormone. Um, how do we optimize its use um, it increases with higher volume short rest period um, like I talked about this is kind of redundant here sorry about that and also targeting larger uh, muscle groups right so like deadlifts um, power clean so our last hormone that we'll talk about today is catecholamines okay so these guys are also catabolic hormones that likes to destroy molecules to make energy um, these guys are also adrenal hormones um, catecholamines, like I talked about in the very first slide, these guys are responsible for your fight or flight response, right? So epinephrine and norepinephrine are two examples of that hormone. And let's look at the roles. What does it do? It increases force production via central mechanism 
and it also increases metabolic enzyme activity. What it also does is it increases muscular contraction rate, blood pressure, and energy availability, and also the blood flow. So a good way to think about this, like I said, is the fight or flight response. It's in times when you need to decide whether you're going to fight or flight. So your sympathetic nervous system might kick in and you need all the blood flow that you um, are required to have at the time and also all the energy that you're required to have. And so that's why everything basically increases and you go into this fight or flight mode. Um, it also augments secretion rates of other hormones like testosterone. So it not only is responsible for its own part, but it also helps um, with efficient usage of other hormones like testosterone. So that is it for today. Uh, that was short and sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed um, chapter four summary for CSCS study sessions. Um, if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, if you find it helpful, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate that and leave a comment so I know who's watching. And so, um, like I always say, feel free to ask me questions in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys.